friends, it's Nancy. Gonna do a little craft with me today. Um, so I have these guest checks that I've already copy dyed. I've got blue ones and I've got these green ones. The green ones have um, French and English. So um, I cut out some pieces and parts from this uh, biography about Edith Holden. Actually, took the one, this image was on the front cover. <laughs> uh, so I cut that out. Um, what a gorgeous book, eh? If you see this, you should pick it up. It has um, some photographs, but it also has examples of her art. Uh, she did much more than just um, Country Diary. She illustrated children's books, and um, I, I think she made illustrations and cards um, to support causes. Um, and it does have some examples of pages that did come from her, um, uh, the country diary of an Edwardian lady. So it does have some of that. Um, so this was a postcard to uh, I uh, to support the um, Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And there's a title page to a book. I like these two. These are uh, there's four pages of these, um, but they're in the sepia tones. Isn't that pretty? I think I have three or four copies of this now. Um, so if you do get an opportunity and you see one, by all means, look at this one. Isn't that gorgeous? You should definitely pick it up. Okay, get out of my way. Alright, so I haven't really got this figured out what it is I'm going to do, but for sure I'm going to start with um, gluing these down something. And what will that something be? I think I will use these somethings. I don't know what these are. Um, they've kind of got like a waxy side on them. I don't know if I can write on the waxy side. I might need to glue on the waxy side. Surely I've got a pen in here. Oh, there's a pen. Let's try. Oh yeah, the waxy side's fine. Okay, um, I can't remember where I got these. I don't know what they are. It is what it is. Sorry, didn't mean to send you flying like that. So I'm gonna start off by stopping the camera from wiggling by gluing these down. But I want to um, remove the perforated part and glue that separately. So I'm just going to use a little Fabri-Tac because it, uh, it, it doesn't warp the pages like um, other glues do. At least that's been my experience. I'm not going to use a lot because I'm going, I am going to sew. I might as well put you right up to the edge. The reason I'm doing this separately is because I intend to cut this out and then layer it on top to make a little pocket. Hope that makes sense. It's a little different in sizes. I've been keeping my eyes open. I want to find um, pink ones in a bad way. So I'm keeping my eyes peeled. These are coffee dyed already. Some of them are darker than others. Like this one's got some really dark edges compared to the other one. I don't want to use that one. I'll use this one. This is my first time using uh, guest checks. So you are seeing 
the first project ever. Hmm. Just keep a little baby food jar there to hold on to things. So to prop my glue up in. And I got a couple other baby food jars that um, kind of corral my, oops, my pens and things. Keep them standing up in the box that I have here. One of these on here. Hmm. Today's the first day of spring. We did have some warmer temperatures today. It was, I think it was eight degrees Celsius, which is, uh, I don't know, 46 Fahrenheit, something like that. But then they're calling, no, oh, that's not gonna fit, rats. They're calling for snow tonight. And then warm temperatures again tomorrow. So hopefully the warm temperatures will melt any snow that we get. So I cut out these images. Have I got them? I cut out these images because they kind of remind me of um, like the Tim Holtz paper dolls. As soon as I saw them in the book, so I thought, yeah, look at this handsome chap with a, his walking stick. Um, so, so, yeah, so as soon as I saw that, I thought, yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Rats, that doesn't fit either. That's another reason for you to watch for this book. So you can have your own paper dolls. This doesn't make you crazy, but I prefer to use a utility knife over a paper trimmer. I should stop apologizing for that. I'm not the only one. I saw somebody else on a video the other night using rulers. She was using an X-Acto knife. And I don't think it was a very sharp X-Acto knife because it was tearing her paper. So. As soon as your X-Acto knife stops cutting like butter, it's time to change your, your blade.
this isn't a quilting ruler. I think this has something to do with um, journaling, like drawing grids or something maybe. I don't, I'm not sure. Got it at Michael's. Um, and I like the size. It's exactly three inches across, which is a really nice tag size. So I find myself using it a lot to hand create my own tags. I haven't been able to do a lot of crafting this week. I'm so tired. I don't know what's wrong with me. I've been very busy at work, but it's it's fun. I was talking to a colleague today. She does uh, criminal injuries cases. And uh, I stopped by her office, and she had files all over the place. And I said, and she is like a neat freak. And I'm like, what is going on in here? And she said, criminal injuries. <laughs> I said, okay, well, you just uh, return to your trauma there. So she's... But she says she likes it. She, she, she said it's really interesting work. Um, I get that. It's not something I know a lot about. There's more um, specific areas of practice that we have at our office that I know a great deal more about. Um, and to tell you the truth, I'm not interested in learning because... That's a whole heck of a lot of trauma to hold. So we're talking about people who've been assaulted and abused and raped and yeah. And it's just more than I would be able to tolerate day in and day out. I just don't have that kind of Resilience, I guess. Or maybe I do. Maybe I underestimate my abilities to cope. Yes, you hold still. so I don't have that happen again. So I was saying in my earlier video about how I had been to a nostalgia oh shoot, pay attention Nancy how I had been to a nostalgia show last week and uh, picked up some magazines I also got a ton of tea cards and cigarette cards that I want to share with you. Actually the one box of cards that I got were actually in a Red Rose tea box. I just about died. I haven't used them very often, but I sure can now. I do want to make these tag shaped. Or I ink them. Oh, they're slightly different shapes. Or sizes, I mean.
Let's just do get one marked up and then I'll try to match that. So I've shown this little technique in a previous video as well. Instead of marking your lines with a pencil or a pen, use your bone folder and then there's no residual marks. Or you could use a stylus or a stiletto, whatever you have. Whatever you use. Okay. I, um, this is the first day of spring, but I have yet to see a robin. Which is weird. Where are our robins this year? All right, now we can ink. Got a tool. Now I tend to be a very, very light inker, which is why I have it flat on the table instead of picking it up in my hand, because I'm just trying to get the very edge defined. I don't need to ink that because I'm going to be covering it with the pocket. bore you with all this inking. I'm just going to do the front pockets and then I'm going to show you another technique. Where did my green ones go? There's one green. Are you my second green? Here's my second green. Okay, I'm going to get it the sewing machine and show you another tip. Before I waste any more time, any more of your time. Okay. So, when you're sewing multiple things, Give assembly line stitching a try. So what I mean by that is you just put one piece right after the other and fo just follow them right along. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing on just a little scrap of paper so that none of the threads get pulled down into the, into the bobbin case. Okay, so I'm going to stitch along the top edge of each of the little pull-off parts. Okay. And 
and then pick up the next one and lay it right behind it. I'm just going to lengthen my stitch a little bit. the next one. So this is a technique that quilters use because when you're sewing so many tiny parts together it goes a little quicker. So there's they're all sewn together like that but you just need to snip the threads between. No big deal. So if that's uh, new to you, give it a shot. And that way you're not, you know, you're not wasting all the thread in between. You're not stopping to cut your thread and restart your thread and fuss around and re-thread your needle. All that other good stuff. Okay. So I do have one Now, do I want to I should probably glue him on first, right? Good dose of glue. I didn't think to ink him though. Can I do it? A little bit. Not terrible. He kind of looks like the chauffeur, doesn't he? So now I'm just going to attach this one to the bottom. getting away from me. <gasps> I also have a shoe on. I usually sew with one shoe off. Nice. I'm always happy when things go well. want a little bit of fabric up there. Come here, fabric. Hmm. 
Mmm, this has got daffodils in it. want to tear it but I'm going to actually just lay the fabric on the blade of this pair of scissors and give it sort of a raggedy appeal go this way then I can have the daffodil going up and down right and a little too wonky. <laughs> wow, I barely, barely caught it on the back. No, I didn't mean to do that, right? Okay. <sighs> now what? Where I put them. I put them here. Oh no, but I do have these. I forgot that I made. <laughs> so this is made out of book page. So I can stick that in and I have some other little ones. I know I've got some little ones somewhere. these little flashcards. I could tuck a flashcard in. Tickets in there. Let's 
put a little more color in. What do you think of that? That was simple. I am going to find those tags though. It's going to make me crazy until I do. But I didn't want to hold you up much longer. I like the little shipping tags like this one. But smaller. Blech. Um, I might want to add one more thing. Maybe a postage stamp. Something dark and brooding. Ooh. I kind of wish I'd... I'll save that for a green one. I wish I'd done that before I'd glued him down. Alright, well I'll leave these out for the other ones. Anyway, so that's... Uh, Kind of my share for tonight. Um, I'm going to keep working it along with these. How much time have I used? Well, that was half an hour, just better than half an hour. So I'll come back and show you the finished tags. So here's the recap. Um, here's the first one I did. This one I found my tags. I, had, I knew I had a whole box of them and they were exactly where I keep all my tags. I don't know why I didn't see them first the first time. I mean they're in a huge box. Anyway, so this one I added the picture of the little girl painting. Well, I guess she was a teenager actually, but... And this is a um, piece that I tore off an old policy envelope that was really gross. And these are some of the tea cards that I got. So these ones are from, I believe, the 60s, but I do have some that are even older, like from the turn of the century. This has a little old man in it with a tag, and I added this. This is um, Willow Ptarmigan, and this is the picture of Edith, and I added this little... I've got a couple stamps there and some um, paper doily and I added that that tea card. So that's what I worked on tonight. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll talk to you again soon.